Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the FIDE Grand Prix uh, quarterfinals. It's uh, Daniel Dubo versus Hikaru Nakamura and uh, as you've seen uh, both of the classical games were drawn now they have to go into tie breaks. Uh, this is the second game of the Rapids. First game of the Rapids was drawn so it will be very interesting to see how this turns out and who will advance to the to the semifinals of the FIDE Grand Prix 2019. Now before we check out the game we do have uh, a nice photo of the two of them sh shaking hands. Compliments of Nikki Riga. Uh, there you have it, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, enjoy the game. Uh, so, like we said, Dubov has the white pieces, and he opens with c4. Perhaps uh, influenced by by Magnus Carlsen, as he has uh, won some very nice game with the English opening uh, lately. Uh, we have e5 by Nakamura, knight to c3. We have knight to f6, knight to f3, and now knight to c6. The four knights uh, variation of the English. Uh, we have g3. Dubov prepares to fianchetto the light square bishop. D5 c captures on d5 knight captures on d5 and of course a bishop to g2 and now avoiding trade with knight to b6 uh we have castles by dubov uh, and now comes a bishop to e7 and uh carlson had this position against topalov in the code de war uh blitz section of of the tournament uh that we covered i i, I believe uh uh, some some a few days ago, uh, but Carlson played a3 in this position. Here, Dubov plays a different idea. He goes b3 uh, and prepares to fianchetto the um, dark square bishop as well. So deviating from the Carlson Topolov game, uh, we have castles by Nakamura, bishop to b2 now, uh, rook to e8, and now comes rook to c1. Just nicely developing pieces, bishop to f8, and uh, it's not uh, a new line or anything. It it, it was played uh, plenty of times. D3. Uh, there are 22 games just in 2019 where this exact same position happened. Uh, so knight to d4 by Nakamura with e3, uh, either pushing the knight back or going for this straight. Knight captures with queen captures on f3, uh, and now just c6, taking away the b5 and the d5 squares from uh, White's knight. Uh, we have rook f to d1 and now queen to g5. And here there w there is one game from 2006 where queen to e2 was played. But here Dubov plays h4. It's a new move and it is as of this moment uh, move 15 that we have a completely new game. So here Nakamura has to decide does he want to go g6, does he want to go e7. But he goes queen to g4 uh, and offers a queen trade. Uh, we have knight to e4 uh, by Dubov, queen captures on f3, just trading queens, bishop captures, and now a5, preparing a4. Uh, we have knight to c5, now a4 nonetheless, we have d4 by white, and now a captures on b3. A captures on b3, and now rook to a2 already. Uh, Nakamura gains a lot of activity with the rook. Uh, getting the bishop uh, out of the way, we have bishop to c3 and now comes knight to d5. And here your bishop is under attack, you already moved it on the previous move. Uh, you don't really have a good square to move it to. Let's say you go bishop d2, you know, try to control the knight here. Uh, not really something you want to do, just bishop captures on c5, d captures and now uh, e4. You push the bishop back and it's hard to say where you're going to push the bishop back. If you go bishop to g2, then bishop to g4 is just deadly. You have to move the rook. Uh, but you can't, if you move the rook, then you're going to lose the bishop, so you will basically lose the exchange. So, after e4, you'd have to go bishop e2, and then, uh, well, you, now your bishop is again stuck here, you can move it as, uh, well, the, the rook is just very strong here. So, Dubov doesn't like any of this, he doesn't want to move the bishop, he rather gives up the other bishop. So, bishop captures on d5, uh, he gives up the bishop pair, we have c captures on d5, and now knight to d3, putting pressure uh, towards the e5 square. And here Nakamura can choose either he will go e4 uh, or he will try something else here. First he develops the bishop. We have bishop to g4 uh, attacking the rook here. Rook to d2 offering a trade also. Uh, he doesn't want Nakamura's rook to stay uh, so active for, for very long. Uh, we have rook captures, bishop captures, and now uh, Nakamura doesn't like e4, then you give up the f4 square to uh, Dubov's knight. Uh, there is, a, well, f6 is an option, Nakamura obviously isn't, uh, uh, you know, an f6 guy. Uh, so he plays e captures on d4 with, uh, with the next idea. Uh, we have e captures on d4 and now bishop back to f5. Uh, pressuring the knight, knight to c5 now, attacking the b7 pawn, and here uh, is Nakamura's idea, he just grabs a lot of activity, rook to e2, attacks the bishop, bishop to e3, and now rook to b2, and now b6 is definitely the idea, you want to remove the defender of the b3 pawn, so 
uh, Dubov might as well capture the pawn. We have knight captures on b7, rook captures on b3, and now just knight back to c5, attacking the rook. Uh, rook to b4, and now comes rook to a1, just grabbing hold of the open a file. And now finally f6, it seems Nakamura uh, is, is uh, now an f6 guy. Uh, we have rook to a8, now Dubov's rook gets a lot of activity, king to f7, unpinning. Uh, and now just rook to d8, uh, trying to grab this rook from behind, uh, the pawn. Uh, we have bishop to e7, uh, a very nice move, a genius idea by Nakamura. Uh, he attacks the rook and gives the white an option. So what do you do here? Uh, I want you to pause the video here and decide what to do. Do you want to move the rook? Uh, where do you want to move it to? Do you want to capture the d5 pawn? Uh, what's uh, what's your plan? So uh, feel free to pause the video and try to you know decide whether you want to capture it or not. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who did decide to capture the pawn, congratulations, you have found the move that Dubov played, but unfortunately it's not the best line. The, the, it seems to be that the pawn is poisoned, but it's not uh, It's not all that easy to see why it's poisoned. Best would be just to run away as far away as possible uh, with the rook, but Dubov captured it. We have rook captures on d5, and now comes Nakamura's idea. Why did he allow all of this bishop to c8? And now you see the problem here. Uh, of course, you have to move the bishop as it was under attack, but the idea is next. You want to go here, you want to go to b7, not now, but uh, the knight is still on c5, uh, but let's say uh, white has to play something. Rook to b1 check is coming. So let's say, uh, what do you want to play? Uh, you don't want to allow uh, rook to b5. If rook to b5, then bishop to e6 will trap the rook, because then the knight will not be able to move, because rook captures rook. So here, if you try something like knight d3, attack the rook, now you get this line, rook b1 check, and now you have to block with uh, the knight, knight to c1, and then just bishop to a3 will win you the game. Uh, there is no way to protect the knight, you have to play rook to c5 and give up the exchange this way, and it's just going to be a much better, much better game for black. Uh, there is really no no good compensation here uh, for for the exchange. And of course, if you just move the king, let's say king here, then bishop to b7 is the plan now that the knight has moved. Uh, and you will again lose this exchange. You have to go knight f4 and give up the rook. If you move it, then of course uh, rook to h1 is checkmate. Uh, one, of the, one of the poisons Nakamura brought to this game. So here, you don't really have a good way of doing this. You don't want to allow rook b1 check, so the king has to run away. King to f1 by Dubov. Uh, but now rook to b5, and now you know that bishop to e6 traps the rook, and there's no way to avoid this. Uh, Dubov just said, okay, I'm just gonna uh, try and uh, increase the activity of my king. Uh, bishop to e6 now, of course you have to capture, we have knight captures on e6, rook captures on d5, and now just knight back to c5. So here Dubov uh, did grab a pawn, but he is down the, uh, down the exchange, but still... Uh, nothing is lost. I mean, he, uh, Nakamura still has to work very hard for his meal. So first f5, taking away the e4 square from white's knight, also preventing further expansion on the king side. Uh, we have knight to d3, and now bishop to d6. Uh, king to f3, bringing the king into the game. Bishop to c7 now, sorry about that. Uh, knight to f4, attacking the rook, and the rook to a5. Getting the rook as far away as possible from the knight. You don't. It's a rapid game. You know. You don't want to always have to check uh, whether this knight will fork your rook and king. Uh, knight to e2, and now comes rook to a3. Just pinning that bishop. Uh, we have uh, knight to f4, and now comes rook to b3. Uh, knight to d5, attacking the bishop, and now bishop to b8. Uh, knight back to f4, and now bishop to a7. Uh, already threatening to win the d4 pawn, as you can see that the bishop is pinned. Uh, so king to e2, unpinning, and now rook back to a3. We have knight to d3, and now comes king to e6. Nakamura now starts bringing his king into the game. Knight f4 check, we have king to d6, knight to h5, going after the g7 pawn, g6, pushing the knight back, and now comes bishop to b6. Uh, now with the idea of bringing the bishop over to, to the f6 square. Uh, we have king to d2. Uh, and now comes king to c6, uh, king to e2 back, and now king back to d6. Nakamura uh, also trying to figure out a way how to how to improve his position. King to d2, bishop back to d8. Uh, now the bishop will be ready to to support the advance of the g pawn. Uh, we have king to e2, and now bishop to f6 as planned. King back to d2. We have king to c6, and now king to e2. Dubov 
has to uh, hope he he can grab a draw out of this game and continue into into the uh, faster rapid games. Uh, king to b5 now with h5 and now the bishop is nicely placed here just g5. Pushing the knight back with knight to d5 attacking the bishop and now again bishop d8 just controlling the, the squares that the knight can go to. Uh, with bishop to d2 now and now rook to a7. Uh, king to d3. Uh, rook to d7 now, attacking the knight, knight back to a3, and now rook to f7, defending the pawn here, uh, with knight to c4, trying to win the rook with knight to d6 check, and now Nakamura just moves it, rook to f8, we have knight back to e5, and bishop to e7 now, uh, we have f3, and now rook to a8 by Nakamura, uh, knight to f7, and now with a double attack uh, towards the g5 pawn, but here just rook to a3. This comes with check, king to e2, and here king to c4. Nakamura now uh, pushes back the white king and grabs more space in the center with his own king. Uh, we have bishop captures on g5, and here Nakamura doesn't grab the pawn immediately. Uh, he says, there's time for this later, I just want to keep my bishop into the game. Bishop to b4, uh, we have knight to e5 check, king to d5, and now knight back to d3, attacking the bishop. Uh, rook a2 check with king to f1, so the king has now been pushed all the way to the back rank, and now just bishop to d2, uh, offering a trade of dark square bishops. Bishop to f6, defending the d4 pawn, but now king to c4, attacking the knight. And now, uh, you don't really uh, have a good square for your knight, uh, if you go knight to f2, then bishop to e3 will be strong with a double attack against the knight and the d4 pawn, so you're going to win the pawn either way, and uh, any other squares are not all that great for the knight. So here, Dubov goes for knight to e5 check, king captures on d4, and now, fortunately for Nakamura, there are no nasty discoveries available uh, for the white knight. So g4, uh, we have bishop to f4 now, with a double attack against the knight here. Knight to, to g6, this comes with check, king to e3, uh, and now knight to h4. Uh, we have f captures on g4, f captures on g4, and now h6, preventing g5. Uh, king to g1 by Dubov, and here uh, there are a few ways to, well, to continue playing this game. Uh, even feel free to pause the video and try to, try to finish this game uh, with black. Uh, try to find the nicest way to win this game for Nakamura. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent winner of, of winning games. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, one possibility is bishop to g5. This is the engine's favorite, just offering a trade or to win a knight. Now, either white will trade or you will go knight f5 check, king to f3, uh, going after the g4 pawn. And now after bishop to g7, you will simply start picking up the pawns here and it's uh, game over. Uh, this is the engine's favorite, but it's not Nakamura's favorite. If you found uh, bishop to h2 check, then you have also found the move Nakamura played, and it is also just as winning, and much nicer, if I might add. Uh, so here you have the option of going king h1, or you can go king f1. King h1 is a is a tougher defense, but it also, it, it's not really enough. Bishop to b8 now go, uh, threatens rook to h2 check, uh, which would be very strong. Uh, and if you try something like king g1, just try and repeat moves, then you get uh, bishop to a7. Now you threaten some nasty discoveries with your king, and after g5, you will go king to f4 check. Uh, king to f1, and now h captures on g5. Uh, this would be very unfortunate if you actually did this, because then h6 pawn is very strong. So instead, you don't capture, you just go king to g4, and now... Uh, you have to see this line all the way until the end, but it's very hard. That's why most likely Dubov decided not to go for it. G6, and now Rook to F2, check. King to E1, uh, Rook captures on F6, now G7. Notice that there is no good way to prevent the pawn from queening, but there is one good way. Rook to E6, check. You use this check to remaneuver the Rook, King D2, and now Rook to E8. You uh, prevented the pawn from queening, and now, of course, it's a completely winning game. Uh, so, uh, after this bishop to h2 check, Dubov did not go for rook to, uh, king to h1, he instead went king to f1, but this is just much worse as we are deprived from this beautiful line that we've just seen. Uh, so Nakamura just played rook to f2 check, of course, now you lose, just lose the bishop here. We have king to e1, and here Nakamura just played rook captures on f6, and it was in this position that uh, Daniel Dubov resigned the game, and with this resignation, he is also knocked out of the FIDE Grand Prix 2019. So excellent victory for Nakamura, uh, who continued uh, to the semifinals. And already today we had uh, the two games that have been played in the semifinals of the FIDE Grand Prix. Uh, uh, both of them were drawn. Uh, and Nakamura drew uh, a game 
uh, against Alexander Grishuk, uh, where a lot, a lot of people were saying that there was so much more to the game. I know it seems like a very fast draw, uh, but you know who are we? Who are we to argue? Uh, you know about them making draws early, uh, and also. Uh, uh, we had uh, the the other pair, uh, Jan Nepomniši versus Radoslav Wojtašek, also ended in a draw. So we will see tomorrow if their clash will end in classical or will they also go to to rapid tie breaks. Uh, and also here we have a nice photo uh, of uh, Nakamura taking a selfie with this young gentleman here. And I also just wanted to point out that this is the correct way to take a selfie. You should always hold your uh, smartphone horizontally, not vertically, because then uh, the photo will be usable on all platforms. You know so. Uh, don't don't ruin the photo by taking a selfie vertically. Uh, you know, photos are, are are forever, and Instagrams and and uh, you know platforms like that are not. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do check out the chess clock. Uh, first thing in the description will be the link to the application on Google Play Store. Give us uh, you know some tips uh, how to improve it, what we can change or add, and you know feel free to to join our beta testing team. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank Hartmut G. Keller and Alexander Gilson for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the FIDE Grand Prix coverage and, uh, well, checking up on your suggestions and, uh, and whatnot. Thank you all. I will see you soon. Have an excellent rest of your day.